Let's talk about how you can create a block quotation in Microsoft Word and we're following here the MLA guidelines 8th edition. So as you can see here I have a fairly long quotation here and the rule is that if your quotation when you type it out in your own text is four or more lines long so more than three lines in other words then you can indent it and set it apart as a block quotation and you can see here that this is definitely more than four lines or four or more lines. So we're going to put our cursor here, we're going to press enter and then we'll get rid of uh, this last line here as well, just going to make sure that this is on its own line. And then we take the whole quotation and we're going to press tab just to indent everything one tab space. Uh, half an inch is the official rule but just press tab, that should be fine. Then we're going to take the quotation marks off, so no quotation marks around a block quotation. We'll take our final punctuation and we're going to get rid of it there and move it to just after the quotation. And you can see that we're doing the opposite of a regular quotation and the reason for that is that it's pretty clear that a block quotation is set off from the text and so it's not really necessary to have quotation marks. And because we've made the, the, that change then we can also move the final uh, punctuation here. Okay, a few other little rules to watch out for. So notice that we have this other, these other quotation marks here, and we had single quotation marks before because they were inside double quotation marks, and that's just to distinguish them. But because the double quotation marks are gone, uh, we can just change these to uh, um, double ones over here. Another thing to watch out for is the spacing around the quotation. So what I see a lot of people do is after the quote they press tab as if this is a new paragraph. And typically you don't start a new paragraph after a block quotation uh, because most of the time you have to explain the quotation or you have to interact with it. And so just watch out that you don't add that tab space. You also don't have to add extra spacing around the block quotation, that's not really necessary. Um, and you can read the MLA handbook and, and look for examples there. One more thing to note is the introduction. So we call this a signal phrase, where you signal that there's a quotation coming. And most of the time with a block quotation, we tend to use a fairly formal introduction, a complete sentence that ends with a colon. But there are other ways to introduce it as well. So if you wanted to write something like, you know, uh, McBeard writes, comma, that would be allowed. It's just that with block quotations, we tend to avoid this kind of more casual way of introducing the quote. And we tend to just give it a little bit more weight with a complete uh, signal phrase or a complete formal introduction, I should say. Okay, so that's it for a, a general block quotation in a prose text. Um, let's have a look next at how you would cite or how you would format a poetry block quotation. So this is what a poetry block quotation looks like. And as you can see, it's very similar. Uh, same kind of introduction, same spacing, same punctuation. But there are a few things uh, to watch out for here. So first of all, uh, each line doesn't necessarily continue to the right margin. You keep the same spacing as in the original. And that also means that if the original had some weird spacing in it, you know, there's all these weird breaks, then you would keep that uh, and try to copy that as much as possible. Sometimes it may happen in with poetry that a line is quite long. So let's just pretend that this line here just keeps on going and going and going. You know, ads, ads, ads who knows what that means. Uh, what you would do here, first you would press enter to make sure that Microsoft Word doesn't mess around too much. Uh, but then you press tab and you can make sure that this line is indented just to show that it's still the same line. We call this hanging indentation. And I think um, if you wanted to, it to look a little bit nicer, you probably just indent it a little bit less. So you might give it some spaces, use your space bar instead if you like, um, or you know, use a more scientific way of making sure that it's all regular. But the main thing is just to make sure that if the line is really long, you can indent it a little bit more on the second line to show that it's still part of the same line. Okay. And I guess this gives a page number, but really it should give, let's say one through four, it should give the line numbers here as opposed to the page number. Um, one more thing about this final citation, and this is kind of a weird thing. Uh, let's say that your quotation that your final line ended over here 
Okay, there's our period. And you can see that our citation is not going to fit on the right side here anymore. It, it falls on a new line. Um, what the MLA guidelines suggest you do is you take this and you align it with the right margin. Okay, so it aligns nicely with the right margin. Um, I think that looks a little bit ugly actually, but um, it's up to you, I suppose. So that would be the proper way to do it. I would be fine too with just moving it back a little bit, but you know, not a huge deal, just something to watch out for. Okay, that's it for block quotations. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, we've talked a lot, a lot about these finicky little rules that apply in certain cases, but most of the time it's pretty easy to do a block quotation.